everyone you guys it's Karen and I'm excited to be talking about these two it is the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Bomb Night Gel Cream and this is the what does it call it a day lotion just says moisturizer SPF 10 so I'm going to talk about both of these probably this a little bit more because I like this a little bit more but I'm really excited to be talking about drugstore skincare because I look at drugstore skincare all the time because I would prefer to pay drugstore prices for skincare because um it, you, it's something you use a lot of it's not something that's going to last you know a year or months it's something that you go through pretty quickly so I do always look at the drugstore skincare but everything I look at I feel like I look at the ingredients and number two is often denatured alcohol and it's just not something that's very good for your skin so I'm delighted to look at the ingredients of these and find that they are pretty darn good so let me talk about this one first because this one is it's so funny because I've been talking about trying to find something like this in two sorts of ways. Firstly, this would I would say is my holy grail night cream, even though it's not actually a night cream. This is the MAC Mineralized Charged Water Moisture Gel, um, and this is what it looks like. And I, I don't use this very often. It's one of those creams, I kind of save it for best, if you like, which is a bit ridiculous, I know, but it's just so expensive. I think this is like 34 pound or something. Um, I think you get 50 mil in it. Yeah, 50 mil. So it doesn't last very long, but I just love it so much. But I wouldn't, I'd go through this in probably less than a month. But even a month, that's £34 a month just for your night cream. And that's just too expensive. So I don't use it that often. And I'm always looking for something that is like this, ingredient-wise and feel-wise. Like, feel this one says that it's a gel cream. And that is what I've seen a lot of and what I've always wanted a gel cream to use as a night cream. The reason I've wanted a gel cream is because I have got oily skin, but I've also got dehydrated skin. So I want something to give it a good amount of moisture, but to feel very lightweight and not to be too heavy and greasy and, you know, feel like it's clogging my pores and going to break me out or anything like that. So when I saw gel cream, I thought it's bound to have alcohol in it because every single gel cream, apart from that MAC one that I have looked at, has got alcohol in it. Um, Feel free to tell me about any others if you know of any others that are gel creams that don't have denatured alcohol in it or alcohol. Um, I'd be delighted to hear about it, but I've seen quite a few, looked at them and like I said, they all have alcohol in. So I was delighted to see that this didn't. So let me tell you about the ingredients, the price and the claims, and then I'll tell you what I think. So the ingredients are, like I said, pretty good. There is no alcohol at all in the um, in the ingredients. There is fragrance, but it is very, very low on the list. So the two things I'm always looking for is, does it have alcohol in the top 10? Does it have fragrance in the top 10? To be honest, when I'm in the store, I normally put my glasses on and see if I can look at the top five. And if it's not in the top five, I would buy it and then have a further look at the ingredients. But this doesn't have any in the top 10. Fragrance is about number 20, and it is, it's, so it's extremely low on the list, not something I would be concerned about. But what I love about it is it does have a scent. And if you've been watching me regularly or, it, or watched my recent skincare video, you'll know that what I'm looking for in my skincare morning, evening, whenever, I like a scent in it because I like the experience of the whole skincare thing. And I don't want it to have, so I want a scent, but I don't want it to have irritating fragrances in it. For example, lavender oil or rosemary oil. These things are not, good for your skin they can sensitize your skin which i've talked about in my fragrance video um, but i do want it to have a nice scent so it's a very difficult combination to get so this has is not only is it a gel cream with no alcohol it has a fragrance without having fragrance synthetic fragrance high on the list or irritating fragrances this is what it looks like uh, that's what it comes like on the hand feels lovely going on the smell is like, it's not an overpowering smell, of course, because like I said, fragrance is quite low on the list, um, but it's like an aqua smell. If something was labeled as an aqua smell, this is what I would expect it to smell like. Um, so the price is £7.99 at four, this is 50 mil. It's a shame that it's in a jar because that does mean that, you know, bacteria and perhaps some degradation of the ingredients, but I will use this so quickly and I will wash my hands every time I use it that that is not a deal breaker for me. I wish it was in this. This is the pump bottle for the day cream and I wish this was in this, then it would probably be my holy grail. I would stop looking. This is what I'd use going forward. because I do already love Garnier. I use their micellar water every day. Um, but it's in a jar, that's okay with me. It's a plastic jar. 
um, which is great, good for traveling. I prefer that than a glass jar, even though a glass jar really is a bit more, that will keep the ingredients fresher. And with plastic, there is always the concern that there's hormones in the plastic that leak into the um, contents. But I think that's only a problem if you're heating them. So like with microwave food, etc. Um, so it says that it has two antioxidant super fruit extracts, so am amla and pomegranate. When I'm reading these claims, they pretty much apply to this as well. I read both claims and they are almost identical with the difference of this having an SPF 10 in it. Um, so this applies to both of them. So two antioxidant super fruits, 15% plant serum. It says it's a unique gel cream texture that's concentrated in hydration. The hydrating ingredient in this and in the other one is glycerin. Um, I suppose I wish it was so sodium hyaluronate because that is, the, in my opinion, a, a better, no, it's different, it's not better, it's different, but I like that as a, as a hydration ingredient, but glycerin is good as well, and so that's the hydration ingredient that I can see at first look. Um, so, concentrated in hydration, yes, because I think it's number two on the ingredient list. Lightweight on the skin, definitely, it does really feel lightweight on the skin. Melts on contact with the skin, yes, infusing it instantly with hydration. Um, no greasy or sticky effect. So I agree with all of that. It does feel lovely going on. It feels very lightweight. It's another one of those that I feel like, wow, my skin feels soft. And there's not many lotions or creams or any skincare that make me feel like that. Now, what I know that one of them is the Clarins Lotus Oil. Then there was a Dr. Jart gel moisturizer, but it had alcohol in it, but it did make my skin feel very soft. I think there was maybe one other, um, and then this. And I just couldn't stop touching my skin and I was kind of touching my skin afterwards anyway because when I'm putting a moisturiser on and I'm doing a review, I want to see, is it going to ball up, you know, because often when I touch my neck, I do this sort of, I suppose as a nervous thing, it's probably not very good, but sometimes I'll do that and get like balls in my hands. So when I use the Estee Lauder, that mask, um, I sometimes use that as a night cream and it does ball up. This does have silicone in it as like the third ingredient, but it doesn't do that balling up thing, which is great. Um, what was my point in that? Oh yes, so I was checking my skin and that's how I knew it feels lovely and soft, but also there was no stickiness. You know, you couldn't like feel any stickiness doing this on your skin, it just felt lovely and soft. It says, from the first night, skin feels smooth and appears fresher. I don't know about fresher, I said, fresher? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure how you would, how, how would you judge if your skin was fresher? Uh, fine lines appear visibly replumped. It says 70% of women agree. I guess I would agree slightly because of the moisture level, but not because there's any anti-aging ingredient. The fine lines will be plumped regardless of which moisturizer you use. So I don't, that's not specifically because of this, but they will feel fine lines and wrinkles, etc. always look better when you've got a level of moisture on your skin, you know, as opposed to dry skin. So um, I guess I do, yeah, they would be visibly replumped. That's what it. There's always these key words. It, it doesn't say fine lines are replumped. It says they're visibly replumped. So they look different, um, but they're not actually meaning that the minute that this wears off, they will look exactly the same. Um, is Moisture Bomb Night Moisturizer right for me? And it just says yes. If your skin is dehydrated, shows the effects of time and lifestyle, dullness, irregularities, fine lines, and you seek a night care that efficiently recharges your skin with hydration and replumps the look of fine lines. Um, every night apply on clean and dry skin. Um, I think that's everything that it says here. There's not too many crazy claims. The only real one, oh, sorry, I did miss a claim there actually. Under the fine lines appear visibly replumped. It says skin looks visibly younger and skin quality looks improved. Again, it says 70% of women agree with that it looks younger and 86% of women agree that it looks improved. The skin quality, again, will look improved with any moisturiser you put on and it will probably look a little bit younger, but we're not talking, like I said, anti-aging. That's not specifically what it is. It's just a moisturiser um, and I'm okay with that. That You guys know I'm not really into... Anti-aging in skincare to me is just never going to give you a dramatic result other than perhaps retinol, um, and, and moisturising ingredients, and this is a good moisturiser. I think that's all there is to tell you about this one. If you haven't gathered, I absolutely adore this, and I can see this being my holy grail going forward, but bearing in mind, I've only used this for four days now, maybe five, 
um, no four, four days I've used this or four nights I've used it as my night cream um, and I still love it but if you would like a kind of final thoughts on it then keep an eye on my empties because I am going to use this going forward so that I can really get a feel for if I like it or not and then I'll stock up on it um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, I've put it down as a potential for my March favourites. I wouldn't want to put it in my February favourites, but with it being skincare, I know that I need a little bit more time. Um, but it hasn't broken me out. It sinks in very nicely. It's no sticky residue, as I said. There's nothing... Um, yeah, I've nothing really bad to say about it. I think it would be great for dry skin. I don't know, I don't have very dry skin. I have dehydrated skin. So what I mean by that is I don't have any dry patches. I just have skin that feels tight if I don't give it enough moisture. If I use a night cream that isn't hydrating enough, my skin feels tight and uncomfortable and it doesn't with this. So I'm assuming it would be good for dry skin. Um, and yeah, love it so far. And the other one in the range is this, and I'm a bit puzzled by this, although I do really enjoy it as a lotion. It's the Moisture Bomb Super Hydrating Antioxidant Moisturiser SPF 10. And like I said, the claims are the same, except that this says it's protecting also. That's what it looks like because it has an SPF 10. It's a very thin liquid. It smells exactly the same, exactly that same aqua scent. The same um, ingredients in that it doesn't have alcohol or it doesn't have alcohol at all and it doesn't have fragrance in the top 20 or so, um, but it's got that nice scent. It dissolves into the skin or sinks into the skin and leaves a lovely, I think it's a lovely makeup base. My puzzlement is because it's an SPF 10 and you know, who is that good for? I don't know anybody. Nowadays, we all know about sunscreen and SPF 10 is just no use to man nor beast, you know. So I have been using this, I've used it twice. I've not used this the four times because I wouldn't use it as my day cream. With an SPF 10, even in winter, it's just not enough. Um, so the way I've used it is one day in here, I took my makeup off here, be in my vanity room. It was the middle of the day, so it wasn't time to do like my whole evening skincare routine, which I do in the living room anyway, so I popped this on and it felt lovely. And then the second time I used it was, husband and I were going out to dinner, and so about kind of tea time, I took my makeup off and redid my makeup. And because it was going to be evening that I was going out in, I thought I'll just put this on. And I also used a BB cream that had an SPF 45 in it, so that was okay. Um, but I'd still, I, I still use something else on my neck. So like I said, it's the SPF 10, that bothers me in this. Everything else about it, I absolutely adore. Like I said, it feels lovely. Um, it feels like a nice makeup. It was a nice makeup base. Um, it sinks into my skin. It doesn't give me any breakouts. It hasn't made my skin feel irritated. It smells lovely. It feels lovely. I love the packaging. I really do love everything about it. This is also $7.99, by the way. They're both $7.99. Um, but I just don't get why they would only have an SPF 10, other than maybe if they if the SPF was higher, then maybe it would be more greasy. Maybe they haven't yet got the technology to, um, you know, make it non-greasy. I don't know. Um, but I really hope that they get some consumer feedback on that and increase that to at least a 30. And then this is a product that I would consider using going forward for sure, because just the scent. I love the scent. I love the ingredients. And I'm just, you know, for the daytime, I'm looking for an SPF of 30 without it being greasy and with it having a nice scent and with it sinking in and being a nice makeup base. This covers pretty much all of that. So I bought these with my own money. Um, this isn't sponsored or anything like that. And I... I get a lot of questions about well, how do you find all these new things how do you know about them and it's really just because I go to Boots so often and I go to Boots probably twice a week and maybe Superdrug once every few weeks maybe even once a month not as much because I don't have a Superdrug near me but Boots are kind of everywhere aren't they and even if I'm going in there just for say painkillers I will walk up and down all of the aisles to see if anything new pops out and because I've been to Boots so often, I know what the shelves look like and new things will stand out to me. Um, and for example, these two, when I bought them last week, I actually went in to try and buy a mirror because my mirror has broken that I use in my, it's in my skincare bag and it's a handheld mirror and it had broken and I went in to look for a mirror, but I just walked up and down the aisles on my way to that section and saw these and was like, oh wow, they sound interesting. Um, read the ingredients, got my glasses out in the middle of boots, expected to just put them back on the shelves, but was delighted I could buy them. So yeah, it's just, um, there's no easy way to find out new products. I wish there was. Um, and actually at one point I did have somebody who was gonna make an app for me and I wish I had the knowledge to do that. Um, 
because the, the only way really is to go onto each website of every brand and click on their new sections. Or somewhere like Sephora, clicking on the new is good, but obviously they won't do drugstore stuff. So, so um, in summary, highly recommend this. Also highly recommend this, but only if you're going to put an SPF of 30 or above on top of it and, and or on your neck. Um, and that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. I will tell you what I've got on makeup wise. I'm really happy with this eye look and it's one that you've probably seen similar to a couple of times. And if it's not up yet, I have got a tutorial coming, but it's a little bit more of a purple in the corner rather than a brown. But this is using the Visa Neutral Matte Palette. And I have to say, this morning I did this look and I thought, this is the third time I've used that peach color on my lid and just done one of the other colors in the outer corner. And I thought, I feel like I might finally have a go-to look, I think you call it in the USA something that I can turn to when I haven't planned a look. And I've never really had something that I've been comfortable with, but I love this peach color so much. And I, something that I was using every day, sorry, playing with my hair, I know it's annoying. Something that I was gonna use every day, I probably wouldn't use a shimmery look, you know, and this is a nice matte color. Anyway, it's the Visart's Neutral Matte. And like I said, I've got a tutorial coming if it's not up already. Um, foundation is the Dior Skin Forever in 020. My lipstick is Stila Lips, Liquid Lipstick in Caramello, um, and I got this in a set that I found in TK Maxx, but as soon as this color comes out, I will be buying the full size, I'm pretty sure. Love the Stila Liquid Lipsticks. Um, and on my cheeks, I have got the Urban Decay Blush in Rapture, and then I've put a little bit of the Kevin O'Quan Highlighter on top. Um, and I think that that is everything. Earrings, you can't really see them, I know, but these are from River Island. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon.